Hello, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'm going to hopefully show you how you can practice using your astrophotography software without actually having any equipment set up, which includes your camera, your mount, your filter wheels, your focuses, etc. And what that will do is one, as a beginner, it will let you get used to what I think is half the battle with astrophotography. Getting the actual hardware and the mechanical side of it working is one thing, and then getting the software working is another thing. So this video concentrates on that software side of things. Also, as an experienced astrophotographer, we all like to choose different products, and certainly like me, I started off with APT, astrophotography tool, and it took me a while to gain the confidence to move to something like SGP. And then finally, I've actually moved from SGP to Nina, at each of those steps, you have to relearn, even though they've got the same basic concepts, you've got to relearn how they've been implemented in those particular software products. And using what I'm gonna go through in this video will hopefully show you how you can do that without having to have the frustrations of trying to do it live when you're out in the field, out in your back garden, losing that valuable imaging time when you could be better used it taking astrophotography images. So without further ado, let's crack on. So we're going to use a feature of ASCOM called Simulation. ASCOM comes bundled with a number of simulator drivers. One for the camera, for the dome, for a focuser, for a filter wheel, for your mount, etc. But these drivers, even though they're not real pieces of hardware, they're just pretending to be those particular components, they allow them to be used then with inside programs such as APT, SGP and Nina. And that means we can basically now play with those programs as if we have real equipment connected. Now, one thing with the ASCOM camera simulator is it only has one picture and that's of the Orion Nebula. So that's no good for things like plate solving. Luckily, there is a free additional camera simulator driver for ASCOM that someone's written called Sky Simulator. There's a link in the description below and one of the first things we're going to need to do is set up Sky Simulator. And the reason we're going to use this, this driver is it uses uh, images from Sky Atlases on the internet to download the image of where your mount is pointing to. So you get pretty much realistic results inside APT, Nina, SGP, etc. So download Sky Simulator, install it, and we'll crack on with configuring it. So you've hopefully got Sky Simulator downloaded and installed now. So we simply launch it. There are a couple of things that we need to change on this screen. The first one is the image source. So this is the location on the internet of where the file is downloaded that represents an image of the night sky that your telescope, your virtual telescope is pointing at. I prefer this bottom option of archive.eso.org. So if you're following along with the tutorial, select this. The next option is where to save this file that it downloads from this Sky Atlas repository to. Now, I've just created a folder called SkySim underneath my documents folder. You can choose absolutely any location you want. One thing to know is you need to remember where this location is because we do need it for a step later on. Then we need to say connect ASCOM mount and from the list pick telescope simulator for .NET press OK and then finally down here there is a start simulation press that button and you'll see that it says simulation running now what this is actually now doing is the mount has a home position it's actually taken an image of where it thinks that mount is pointing at and storing it in this location here as the mount moves it will then take another image from the sky atlas and overwrite the current image so that when you use things like Nina, SGP, uh, APT, you will see the image and that's how this simulation works. Now for this to, to actually continue working, you have to leave this running. So we can now minimize it and I'll go through now APT and Nina, two very popular astrophotography programs and how to use it with inside those. Let's have a look at astrophotography tool, APT. This is version 3.90 which was released a few days ago. However, this will work with any previous version of APT as they all supported ASCOM. So when you launch APT, if you get any of these dialogues, just press no or cancel to them. Then over here on the right hand side, we've got the camera tab and the connect button. So we want to press connect because we want to connect to our virtual sky simulator camera. 
That should bring up this camera type dialog. Now, if you don't get that, it's because APT thinks you've previously connected to a camera. So all you need to do to get around that is to hold the shift key down whilst you're pressing the connect button and that will force this camera chooser to reappear. We want to pick the third option down, CCD, and then from that list, pick ASCOM camera. Press OK. That will now ask us which ASCOM camera we want to connect to. And in that list, you should now see Sky Simulator. If you choose that and then press properties, you will actually get the properties of the Sky Simulator driver. Now you can change all sorts of things in here, such as whether it's got a cooler, whether it can um, control the power to the cooler. You can fiddle around with all those, and I recommend you do once you get experience with this. But the thing you need to do to make this work is to press this image file button here. Now, if you remember in the previous step, when we were configuring the Sky Simulator, we had to choose a path and I chose a SkySim folder under my Documents folder. That's what this is asking you for here is, where is that path? And then inside, what's the name of the file? Now the default file name is always called image. So you need to browse to your path that you saved your file to, or told the Sky Simulator to save the file to, and then pick the image.png file that's in there. Then press OK, then press OK, and APT will now connect to the Sky Simulator camera. And we can see down here we've got all sorts of information coming up about the size. Don't worry about that right now. Let's take a very quick test shot to see if it's working. So over here on the bottom of the camera dialog, we need to choose bulb from the exposure mode. And then we want to set that to be five seconds. The reason we need to set it to five seconds, it's just recommended by the author of Sky Simulator to be a minimum of five seconds. And that's because when I press the shoot button in APT, which we're gonna do in a few seconds, it's actually gotta go away and download the file for what it thinks it's looking at. Now, if your internet is slow, you may need to up this to 10 or 15 seconds. Start off with five and see how you get on. So with those two set, I'm just gonna press shoot. And you can see the exposure timer counting down or counting up, sorry. And then it brings in an image. Now you may notice we've got artifacts up here. That's just unfortunately part of the file that's been downloaded from the Sky Atlas repository that we've selected previously. If you don't see a file, sorry, if you don't see an image, go over to the tools option and press histograms. And if you've got something like that, it's because the image needs what we call stretching. So press the auto stretch left or auto stretch right option and you should then see the image. So that was really it in a nutshell. But we'll move on to some other steps which are a bit, little bit more interesting in APT such as plate solving. We're going to need to download a program called ASTAP and I'll go through that next. Okay, let's minimize APT and if you in a web browser, go to the following link. I'll put it in the description. It's the location of where to download ASTAP. This is fast becoming the plate solving uh, program of choice. It does other things as well, but the plate solving that's built into ASTAP is absolutely phenomenal. It does it really quickly. Blows plate solve two and all sky plate solver out of the water. You need two components. You need the program, then you need the database. I would recommend the H18 database. Both of these need to be installed. You need to install ASTAP first and then install the large star database. Don't worry about um, where the database thinks it needs to install. It will automatically tell you've got ASTAP installed and put it in the right location. So get those two downloaded and installed. Then back in APT, what we need to do is go to the gear tab click Pointcraft. Now Pointcraft is just APT's name for its plate solving function. Before we do anything we need to tell Pointcraft about ASTAP that we've just downloaded. So click the settings option. You can see mine's already configured. The default location will be C program files ASTAP and you can use the chooser here to browse to it. You don't need to type the path in. So I'll go through the motions. There it is. Press OK. Then also tick this option that says use ASTAP for blind solving and then press OK. 
Now in theory, the next thing we need to do is to connect a virtual scope. Now this is the mount, this is the telescope simulator for .NET. So again, press that, and then from the list, pick telescope simulator for .NET. Press OK, and we're connected to the same virtual scope or mount that the Sky Simulator program is also connected to. Let's see if it's if it plate solves. So I'm going to say scope pause. So this is basically telling Pointcraft roughly where the scope is pointing to. And then I'm going to press solve. See that literally took a second. So it's worked out where in the night sky this is actually looking at, where the virtual scope is looking at. Now, if you're doing this for real, you could do all sorts of things now, like you could sync your mount so that it, you could build up your pointing model. Um, we can also do things such as we can use the aim function with inside APT to get our framing slightly better. So one of the things that AP doesn't, APT doesn't have is a great framing tool. But before we do that, I'm just gonna close this down. I'm gonna go back to camera. Sorry, I'm gonna go back to objects under gear. And I'm gonna tell APT to slew the scope to somewhere different. So I'm gonna pick the Trifid Nebula. So if we pick this and then press go to, you'll see up here over on the left hand side, the scope is now slewing the virtual scope is now slewing around to where it thinks the Trifid Nebula is. So we'll have to wait for that to finish. Okay, that's finished. I'm just going to press shoot, which is going to take another five second bulb exposure. Hopefully we'll see the Trifid Nebula. Wow, worked. So let's use Pointcraft to frame this up. now. If I bring point craft back up, I'm gonna to have to say it's a scope pause, so it knows roughly where it thinks it's pointing, and we're gonna press solve. It's solved it, so all good. So let's say for whatever reason, I want this star here to be the center of the frame. What we can do in point craft is, now we've solved it, we can go down to this positioning option down here. I'm gonna press solved. It puts the coordinates of the solved RA and deck in. Then I'm going to press aim and I'm going to tell it where I want the center of the frame to be. So if I pick this here, what that's going to try and do is move this to be in the center of the frame and then press go to plus plus. It comes up with a message saying do you want to sync the scope with the current solved position? I'll say yes because it's fairly accurate to where it's pointing to. And what it's doing now is it's moving the scope ever so slightly over to that position. And what it's going to do is take another image, solve it until it gets within a few pixels of where it thinks it needs to be. Hopefully we'll see this star over in the middle. As I spoke, it's done it. And this has gone over down here. So that's a little bit of plate solving using the virtual camera simulator and sky simulator itself. Okay, let's have a look at Nina. So I'm going to do something very similar to what I did in APT. We'll take a single image, make sure things are working, and then we'll do a little bit things more complicated by doing some plate solving, some slew into a target, and then we might add a little bit more onto that by doing a multi-target sequence. So the first thing I'll just show you is in Nina under pl options plate solving, I have already configured it to use AS tap, and down here this is where I have told Nina where AS tap is located. Again, similar to what we did in APT. So on the equipment section under camera, we need to pick our Sky Simulator ASCOM entry, press connect, all connected. And just for fun, I'm just gonna start cooling the camera down because I can, just to show you that these are the sort of things you can experiment with. I'm gonna to go to the telescope section. And again, we need to pick telescope simulator for .NET and press connect. So under the imaging section, there is a option here where we can just take a very simple uh, five second exposure. So I'm just gonna do that like we did in APT just to make sure whatever the camera's looking at, we'll get some kind of image. And there we go, it's somewhere pointing north. 
So I'm happy that the camera's working. So I'm now gonna pick this framing option. So this is a really nice feature in Nina that lets you uh, frame objects with quite a lot of versatility. So the first thing I'm going to search for is, I'm gonna search for M81. So I do that and then type in load, uh, press load image and it will show me my field of view and M81 in the middle. So obviously we know M82 is very near this. So I actually want both galaxies in the same shot. So I can just simply move this field of view, which Nina's worked out from my virtual camera and scope size as to what I would get in my frame. I'm then gonna say, add this to a target sequence. And I'm just gonna use the simple sequencer for the moment. So in here, we've got options of what we can do at the sequence startup. So very quickly, I'm just going to tell it that we need to slew to the target and we need to center the target. That will force Nina to kick in plate solving. I'm going to need to increase this exposure time to five seconds. We could say cool the camera, unpack the mount as well, all sorts of options. But before we kick this off, I'm going to go back to the framing assistant and I'm going to add another target. So I'm going to pick the Horsehead Nebula. So again, load the image and we get our field of view. So let's say I want the Horsehead and the Flame Nebula in the same shot. So again, I can just say uh, add target to sequence, simple sequencer. And you'll notice we've got another section in the sequence set now. So again, with the horse head, I need to set it to say, slew to the target and center it. And again, you've got all the same controls. We need to give it a five second exposure. And I think I'm ready to go. So I'm gonna press go on this sequence. And what's gonna happen now, it's gonna start on M81. It's gonna slew the mount, the virtual mount. It's gonna take an image, it's gonna plate solve it. It's gonna reframe it if it needs to adjust it. And then it's gonna move on uh, to take the sequence images and then move on to the Horsehead Nebula. So this isn't a demonstration of how to use Nina or how to use APT. I have had to cover those topics just to show you how to use a simulator. I'm hoping you can see and get the idea that using the simulator and the simulator camera and with Sky Simulator is you can practice, you can test new software out without having to waste time out in the field. You can even find new things that you didn't know were available to you. So, um, for example, when I moved from SGP to Nina, I used this very concept to work out how to use Nina, as well as watching lots of great YouTube videos. But there's nothing uh, as good as actually trying it for yourself and, and stumbling through those options. So hopefully you can see uh, we're on the horse head. Uh, it's plate solving it and it's probably running through the sequence very, very shortly. We go to our imaging tab we'll see it, it, it has indeed finished these are the resulting images so this is the image of m81 obviously it's framed it correctly we've got both galaxies in there and then this is the image of the horse head and uh, we've got a very bright star called alm attack in there so next to the flame so um that, that's the video so i hope you've enjoyed it i hope you found it useful as ever if you want to ask me any questions just drop me, me an email my email details are in the uh, comments below i do try and reply to those if you want to like, uh, drop a comment asking a question that's absolutely fine tweet me and as ever if you want to subscribe to the channel i'd be most appreciated and would be your friend forever drop me a like if you liked the video drop a dislike if you didn't like the video and i'll catch you next time so clear skies everybody and take care